Welcome back to another FCA Huddle Up. This is a global sports gathering and we're pumped that you joined. We have a lineup of some incredible guests again today and I'm gonna introduce each of them and then we're just gonna dive right in. I'll introduce myself too. My name's Mo. If we haven't spent a little time together on YouTube here before, um, but we have a couple special people with us. Karis Watson, we will start with you. Karis is a middle blocker who played college volleyball at Clemson University. And then you've been playing professional volleyball in Europe since 2017, right? You're in Germany now. Well, I guess you're home in South Carolina now, but how are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing? I'm great. I'm in Rockville, South Carolina. I left Germany uh, as soon as all of the craziness started. So it's good to be, good to be back stateside. Now, were you guys mid-season or competing? Or we were actually towards the end of our season. We had one game left that Saturday, um, the 12th. And so I we left Sunday. They canceled the league and we all dispersed. Man. And for those of you guys watching who have tuned into the other FCA Huddle Ups and you don't know, Karis is Benjamin Watson's sister, younger sister. So we're excited to have you on, Karis, and to hear from you a bit. We also have Damian Hobgood, a professional surfer, originally from Satellite Beach, Florida, but I think you're in California now. You became pro right out of high school. And what I have noted is that you once held the highest two-wave grand final score in pro surfing in 2004. Also, a movie star known for your starring role in the 2019 award-winning documentary called And Two If I See, um, which actually you noted, hey, boo, hey dude, what's up? Got a son in the background, um, is on Prime Video for free, right? Yep. Yeah, And Two If I See. I think most people got Prime Video about now. Um, and uh, yeah, you can watch it for free. Nice. Very cool. And what's your son's name? We'll say hi to him, too. It's Cole. Hi. Cole just scored on some Jersey Mike, so he's ready to, I I he's ready to go. There's no, one, there's no one in his room, so I was like, this is a little hideout. But <laughs> well, Cole, we're happy to have you crash. Uh, we also have Helen Morales, an old friend. We go a little bit back, so this is exciting. Um, Helen's an American freestyle wrestler. She was a gold medalist in the 2011 Pan American Games and the 2015 World Wrestling Championships. Also became the first ever American to win a gold medal in women's freestyle wrestling at the Olympic Games during the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. So we have a gold medalist on the line for all the wrestlers watching, pretty incredible. Helen, where are you? How's it going? I'm in Rockville, Maryland right now. It's going good, you know, uh, I mean, given every, everything, but it's just nice to be with family. Yeah, so that is where your family is. Mm -hmm. Well, very cool. So I want to start out um, with you guys just with a few personal questions. We're going to do like a little rapid fire uh, lightning quiz. And I will just, we'll go in this order with your answers. Harris first, then Damien, then Helen. They're just going to be quick answers. So let's hear it. First question in our post-quarantine daydreaming. Which restaurant will you go to first when we are? Unleashed. You start, Karis. Um, there's actually a coffee shop in Rock Hill that's not super new, but I haven't been there yet on the inside, and I hear it's really cool and uh, very modern. So I'd like to go there. It's called Knowledge Perk. Shout out. Very cool. Shout out. What about you, Damien? Restaurant. Where are you going to go eat? Um, well, I love Fish 101. It's like a local fish joint we have here, and uh, just great people and. So yeah, I love I love it there, but they're still doing takeaway. So, um, you know, there's a lot of restaurants still doing takeaway. So I still get to, I, I still been eating there. Still get your fish fix. Oh, yeah. good. Helen, where would you go eat when we are uh, released? There's a place called the Pines of Rome, and it's got amazing Italian food and the best white pizza I've ever had. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Okay. Um, which would you guys go to first? A movie theater or a hair salon? Movie theater, 100%. I'm ready to see Mulan. <laughs> possible. <laughs> Damien, what about you? Um, probably a movie theater with my kids, for sure. They, they love going to movie theaters. Has your wife been giving you the haircuts during quarantine time? Or did that no, happen? it's actually why I got a hat on because the wig is just, I got the mud flap. Look at you, man. She gave me a haircut. <laughs> so I was just... She did give my son a haircut, but I kind of just said, ah, I'll just kind of wait a little bit, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, do, I do need a haircut for sure. Helen, what about you? Movie theater or hair salon? Man, hair salon. These roots are like 
this far back right now. <laughs> so <laughs> right. Let's talk about here. Uh, okay, concert or sporting event? If you had the option of one of the two, what have you missed more, music or sport? Concert. Concert. Who yeah. would you go see live right now if it was an option? Uh, well, I don't. They don't have a tour right now. I don't think. But my favorite band is Paramore, and they're really good live. So maybe them. Very cool, Damien. Concert or sporting event? Yeah, it would definitely be concert, and it was uh, a definitely a bummer. Like late April, a uh, Lauren Daigle was coming to town in San Diego, and we had tickets. And of course, it got postponed for like November, but then I just saw it's like that's even postponed. So uh, yeah, my wife and I really love to go see her. We we saw her last year, and uh, we were looking forward to this year, but mm, I'm not sure it's gonna happen. Yeah, interesting times. What about you, Helen? Um, I'd say concert, uh, but I, I mean, between the two, I'd rather go salsa dancing. So if I can go dancing, that's what I'd like to do. Okay, Helen's thrown us a curveball. She would go to a concert <laughs> and salsa dance in the aisle. I love that. I'm not a big concert person or sporting event person. So. Yeah, salsa dancing. I'd, I'd, I'd take you up on that. That would be cool. Um, okay, and last rapid fire. You guys can pop out your answer. Which phrase will you be glad to not hear so much anymore once we move forward. Social distancing, Zoom call, or coronavirus? Um, social distancing for me. I feel yeah. What about you, Damien? Um, was it social distancing, coronavirus, or what was the other one? Or Zoom call? Um, I don't know, maybe Zoom call. <laughs> I don't know, they all kind of. <laughs> Yeah. there should be a d all of the above but yeah. I, yeah, I would i would agree social distancing yes we've missed people i feel like you know it's really dragging out when the introverts are also like i miss people <laughs> that's, <laughs> the, that's the camp yeah, that's a good one. yeah okay so all of you obviously being um athletes but even more importantly followers of christ there are a lot of athletes tuned into this um who are coming to know Jesus or walking with him, learning how to live out their faith as well. And so I would love um, to just give you guys the opportunity to share um, the dynamic ways as things have shifted that you've also seen um, your faith shift or opportunity to grow. Um, so I would love to know, uh, we'll start with you, Karis. What in this season um, ha has it looked like for you in your faith walk and also sort of in your professional walk? I mean, having to step away from the sport um, and into kind of an unknown season, what's that looked like for you? Faith kind of colliding with the chaos of sport being on pause. Yeah, um, I think with everything sort of shutting down and sports being stripped away, um, God's really been teaching me how to trust in him and his, and his plans. Um, I had a lot of plans that I that I thought were important and um for like next season and for my summer even um but I'm just learning really to trust in him and um and know that he he's in control um also like with sports being taken away I'm kind of you know thinking a lot more about what uh refocusing on um where I'm placing my identity and refocusing on um getting back to a point where I'm um, remembering that my identity is in Christ and not in my performance on the court or anything else. So, yeah, that's good. Um, Helen, I kind of ask you the same question. Where did things, I guess, leave off in sport with you? Um, and, and what's that looked like for you in this season, um, just mm -hmm. as a, a Christian athlete, but with the athlete portion kind of up in the air? Yeah. So, um, I've kind of had an interesting journey where I really felt like God uh, led me, you know, was calling me to do another Olympic cycle. But this, this whole four years, I've just been plagued with injuries. And it's just been like, I mean, for the last two years, I, I really wasn't on the mat competing. And so I finally um, competed, started competing again this February and was trying to still make a run for the Olympics by August. And then when everything happened and it shut down, I had a lot of peace on the athletic side because for me I think what God's been teaching me is like I always go before you and mm. so you can just rest in that and and that also God's not bound by time um so not to get 
stressed as time goes on or I need this much amount of time to train or I need more time to do this and and really he's been teaching me just about like where's your time best spent Mm -hmm. Um, because it gives different uh uh what do you call it different payback to spend time alone with God or to spend time just trying to pass the time they feel like the returns are two different things so he's just been teaching me that that's really good. I'd love to dig into that even more in a second, um, the returns of where our time's invested. But Damien, I'd love to hear from you too. What has sport looked like for you in this season with a lot of unknown or a lot of changing things around you and also um, how your faith has kind of led you through this, this dynamic time? Yeah, I, I, first of all, it's a great question. Um, second of all, um, yeah, so, so I kind of, been through this a little bit I'm a little bit older obviously and uh so you know I've retired from my sport right and I knew that was when I was going through that was really hard for me um and you know really it was you know people can call like a midlife crisis but really it's just an identity crisis even though I was following the Lord and I was a, a Christian for a long time loving Jesus I didn't realize how much of my identity was in what I was doing and basically how I was uh, really performance driven, you know, I basically addicted to performance. And, um, and so there was, there was a hard process and it was a long process that the Lord took me through. And then, um, so when this went down, uh, I was like, wow, like I've, you know, I've gone through this and it's been hard and, and it's either going to be taken to the next level because a lot of the beaches got shut down. So you couldn't even go to the beach or surf. And then, um, but then really I was just thinking about everyone else. Like, so basically like, wow, like the whole, a whole world, whatever I, Hey Cole, can you turn that down, buddy? Sorry, my son's got his iPad on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I mean, the whole world just like was, was basically stripped of, of whatever they put their, were putting their identity and I felt like, and, and I felt like it was, it was really gonna reveal a lot of things to people, you know, because it was like, I don't know, when I retired, it, it revealed a lot to me that I didn't even know was there. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. I, I remember when I finished competing as well in college, yeah. I think there's kind of that grief period for yeah. every athlete when the sports either pause or stop altogether. Um, and there was a real grief to it, but it also led me to the place of praying like, God, what else have you knit into me? What other skills and talents and gifts and passions? And um, like you guys both, you know, share when that identity is kind of stripped away, it's interesting how it thrusts us towards the foot of his throne to say, remind me who I am. Remind me who I am outside of a volleyball player, a surfer, a wrestler. Um, so Helen, you mentioned before sort of where time is invested and what is yielded from that. We're all very uh, proficient at knowing the amount of time it takes uh, to become excellent at a sport um, and getting the yield of that. But what have you learned in this time of um, time invested in the presence of God and the yield that comes from that when all these things are stripped away? Mm, Yeah, (laughs) great question. (laughs) I think for me, um, especially when I had my the last injury in August, and that was a six, seven month recovery. Um, and we talk about identity. I had like kind of everything stripped from me. I didn't have my health. I didn't have the relations. I mean, everything, you know, it's like a little rock bottom. Um, but it was good because I, um, you know, a mentor at my church kind of said like, sit with God and like really sit until you hear him. And so that was like my goal every day. And I think being around people that have a a very close relationship to the Lord, it's the same thing when you're like, Ooh, that coach has this cool move. I want to know what they know. Um, And so for me, I just decided I I really want to figure out what spending time is like, and can I get out of it? What I think these like great preachers or these like, you know, real spiritual people get out of it. And so uh, just sitting and listening and abiding and like, which all sound like just words, but really it was just, I think the biggest, especially during quarantine, I think an eye-opening thing for me is like, why can I binge watch something on Netflix, but it's like super hard to sit for 30 minutes with God. And, uh, and as I started to pursue and put more into that time with the relationship, I realized like, oh, there is a presence, like there is a peace, like you can, man, you can sit alone with God and it doesn't have to be like, he's giving you 
20 million words. I mean, he, he, you know, one word from him could have so much more impact than pages and books and all these other things. So uh, the, I, I can't really put words. I mean, I, I know, you know, I, I can't, I think we all do. Like I can't put into words the return that you get, but I do know that every time I come out of that, I feel better. I feel whole. I feel centered. I feel connected to the vine. Um, so, and that's just kind of been my experience so far. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. We, we, we are just going to deep dive now because y'all are speaking <laughs> my language in this minute. And this is the beauty, I think, of, of following Christ. When all is strip, stripped away, he never leaves nor forsakes us. And it actually invites greater depth. Uh, we find the room and the space and the Sabbath, like the rest in his presence that brings depth. So um, Karis, I'd love to know from you, have there been ways that he um, has been deepening your faith in this season or ways that you've been experiencing God in an even deeper way in his word or by his spirit? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, with, with all the distractions being stripped away and like having to figure out how to spend my time wisely, I'm realizing just how like shallow my reading of scripture has been, like my quiet times. Um, it's kind of I mean, I have, I have periods where obviously I go deeper into, into my reading, but um, I think a lot lately I've just been kind of skimming over trying to get things read and just do it because I know I'm supposed to do it. Um, but yeah, so like looking, um, looking back on a lot of things that I've, that I've already read and highlighted, for example, um, I'll read it and realize, oh, that's like, seems like a new concept to me, but I've already read it. Um, yeah. So actually this month, I've been memorizing Romans 8, um, and that's been really good uh, for me to realize that if I have to go over it and over it and over it again for it to be hidden in my heart, um, rather than just, like, glazing over it, and, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely learning through verse memorization um, just how bad I was before about um, taking the scripture for granted and just thinking, like, okay, well, I'll just read it real quick and expect it to be reflected in my life. Um, yeah. That's good. That's really good. Damien, what about for you? This um, Have you found opportunity in this time for new depths of faith to be found or depths in your relationship with God? What's that looked like for you as a, as a father and um, as a man? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's been more probably like a father role lately just because, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with my kids basically 24 seven, which is great. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but, um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's allowed me to connect with them a lot more and, and just kind of, um, really just kind of seeing how the, how my heavenly father fathers me and how like, I'm supposed to be that, uh, that resemblance. So I can point point my kids to my heavenly father and their heavenly father so so I kind of kind of been thinking about that a lot um and uh really just going on adventures with them and trying to just uh you know broaden their horizons and uh you know I bought my kid a motorbike I bought a we were skateboarding a lot before they shut all the skateboard parks down and and um yeah, really just trying to, just trying to get in, in nature so you can, I, I think you can see the Lord in so much of, uh, of his work. And, uh, so I just really just been kind of, kind of diving more deeply into that with them than so much, uh, uh, personally my, myself, you know, because a lot of times when they're at school and different stuff like that, I do have more time to do it more personally, mm -hmm. but it's been more of, uh, with them yeah. yeah yeah it seems like this this time in social distancing has actually um kind of recaptured a lot of believers hearts in the understanding of how important others are in our walk how important the body of christ is the body of believers are for encouragement for edification to do life together to learn through each other um i would love to know from you guys if you all have uh, with kind of sport or with the distractions or with the idols even stripped away if you've found yourself um in different type of community or if you found yourself seeing people 
again, kind of in greater depth and others needs um, when our own needs. I mean, I just remember when I played soccer, it was like life was here, my sport, my needs, my training time, my, my, my. And suddenly when that's gone, you're like, oh, there's, there's other people who have needs and need to be well. I'd, I'd love to know if in this season, it stood out to any of you all, um, the needs of others or how you could serve others or um, be there for other believers. You, you got anything in that regard, Karis? I know you said you're with your family in a new way in this season. Yeah, um, it definitely gives me more time to focus on, on other people when I'm not so busy. Um, for me, when I'm abroad, I do a lot of video chatting and uh, reaching out to people from back home anyway, so that hasn't changed so much. Um, but it has been nice that, maybe not nice, but um, it's been advantageous that most people are more accessible. I can, I can video call a lot of people because they don't, are not going to work and they're not doing anything. Um, and there's just more time, I think, to have deeper conversations rather than having to just touch and go. Um, yeah. so that's been really good, I think, for my heart and for theirs, um, just to be able to actually ask, you know, deep questions and have deep conversations and, and see really how people are doing. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Helen? Has, has God shifted anything in your perspective of others and the people around you or other people with needs in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when they decided to uh, postpone the Olympics, they, a ton of media outlets reached out to a lot of the athletes and it was almost like they kept asking, like, are you frustrated? Are you super, are you really upset? Are you, you know, and I finally told them, please stop asking me questions about negativity because I'm like, for one, everyone in the world is going through this. This is a global pandemic. And then it just really starts to make you take a step back and I think be grateful for the things you, you do have. And you just realize like not everyone gets to just delay a date for their life. Like, okay, well we get to do this goal again later or for a lot of people um, because my friends in the dance world and, and teachers and stuff like that, uh, they've just shared with me a totally different experience. And so I think to just see how everyone's getting affected differently by it um, is just, uh, you know, I, I think causes you to be more empathetic and compassionate. And then um, I would just agree that I think it also opened up um, a lot of conversations with just friend, reconnecting with friends and, and people. And I think sometimes because we're all in this state of not knowing and not having the answers, I think we all come together with our vulnerabilities more and it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to show those vulnerabilities um, because we all know that we're all going through it. And I think that's really opened the door to a lot of conversations um, about people and their faith and like, yeah, really, where are you? Where are you putting your faith and how is it going for you? Is it bringing a positive experience? I think when we're really trusting um, in Jesus that there, there's going to be that undercurrent of peace that is that is holding us and I think yeah. people see that and then you get to have conversations about that yeah very good any unique conversations for you that have popped up Damien just with others in light of um everything going on in light of the shifts kind of in your life as well um yeah I, I think the, the ladies you answered that very good I was really really uh, interesting to hear those answers and uh, you know and I'm, and I'm a little similar you know where it was like um, I knew that this was going to be an opportunity for me to reach out to a lot of people that usually don't have time that usually never really want to like say how they're really feeling and um, so I knew that was going to be a really good opportunity so I've I've really uh, taken those those uh, those opportunities seriously and really and really um, consciously like had you know just people that I, that I reach out to and, and it's fun too because it's like wow these people are gonna actually like w like want to talk and want to like you know want to get things off their chest and and uh, so that that's been cool for me for sure um, also uh, also just really like asking the Lord like like what what like what are these people going through like like what what is like you know you got these you know maybe it's kids that that aren't gonna you know have food because school shut down um and really trying to like see what that family's going through and how you can meet that need um and then even just like you know maybe it, it just whoever it is like whatever group that maybe it's like uh yeah I, 
I don't know, someone in some, in some other profession and you're like, Oh, I wonder what they're going through. Like, you know, so they can't go to work and now they're like, and so it's really just been like a, a conversation with the Lord of trying to help me see what that, that person's going through and then trying to have that empathy uh, mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. It almost seems like kind of the theme of what everyone's sharing in this time is ultimately that adversity um, really can bring us to fulfilling the greatest two commandments to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We, we're drawn nearer to God as well as to love our neighbor uh, as ourselves. We're drawn near to others because in adversity, we can all relate in our struggles and in our hardship. I would love, I've done this on sort of every call, um, and this was the rapid fire moment I told, I, was, I told you guys I was gonna throw at you. In light of being drawn near to him, um, what has in a 30 second sermon, you're each gonna get 30 seconds, one thing God's been teaching you in your time in his presence and his word uh, that you haven't shared yet. 30 second sermon, ready, set. Who's going to go first? Damien, it's okay. you. <laughs> 30 seconds. What's even uh, um, <laughs> I think right now, but uh, just, uh, I think it's, I don't know. I think it'd be just more be on identity. Just like those those really like kind of weird feelings or those or, or when fear creeps up or or like I feel this anxiety or like depression or I feel like useless I feel unworthy like all these things that are that could be rising up and could be really painful um to really like I really press into that and really realize like wow like lord what's going on here like like what why am I feeling this way why why am I angry like Lord help me unravel this um mm -hmm. and so yeah that's just like and notice notice those times of pain and hardship and these things are gonna just it's gonna draw you closer and so know that know that it's not it's not that pain's not in vain and um you're gonna go into a deeper relationship with him through this and uh and just roll with it and don't uh you know don't go to all these other vices and different things that that you think will will, will numb the pain because uh it, it just it won't yeah it's really the only one that satisfies what about you karis i see you trying to look to your scriptures quickly what's your 30 seconds <laughs> yeah. the whole call. she said i'm not doing it she's gone yeah. i was like maybe it's a call <laughs> You know, yeah. she saw me fumbling. She was like, dude, this guy is fumbling and I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it's, um, I've already said this in a way. Um, but I, I am trying to read through the Bible, the whole Bible this year. Um, and it has been really cool to see how, um, Jesus is just so present in the entire scripture. Um, from beginning to end. Um, and it's just teaching me more about God's omniscience and his sovereignty um, and how he worked together, like every, everything that happened, um, what, we would, what we would perceive as bad um, circumstances or um, people who are unworthy um, all throughout scripture to bring about his plan of salvation for us. Um, and uh, that just like really has hit home because if he can work together history to bring about Jesus and bring salvation for us and to save us from our sins, um, then none of this is a surprise to him. Um, and knowing that um, I should not be afraid and I should trust in him and trust in his plan um, because he works all things together for good for those who love him. Um, so yeah, that's been really exciting to me uh, just to have that peace um, and realizing that you know, he's got it and I really don't have to be afraid anymore. Um, and so, yeah, I've been trying to keep that in my heart and spread it to like my friends or whoever I can encourage um, with it. So, yeah. yeah. Is that 30 seconds? Preach, girl. That was like 45 seconds, but somebody got saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sovereignty of God is, is beautiful. It's beautiful. What about you, Helen? You dropped off. You jumped. Yeah, sorry. You the spot. <laughs> what can you hit us? Yeah. Um, I was going to say my, my theme, and it's been kind of interesting right now, has just been 
the, the truth will set you free. And, you know, Jesus says he's the way, the truth and the life. And I think that's things that we want right now. We want the truth and we want to know the way and, you know, we want life. And um, just it's been like kind of a, I don't want to say like a radical, um, you know, the foundation's there, but I feel like we're renovating. just diving and in, diving into stuff I'm getting into Hebrew and just reading like you know studying the law and like you know how was the law fulfilled and and what what how is God's law different or how is like Hebrew mindset different than Greek mindset and just like wow God okay I really want to start to think like you I want to start to understand like you more so yeah. it's been a lot of like oh, moments for me so girl it sounds like we're actually in a pretty similar spot in a pretty similar journey. This time in so many ways has opened up the room and the space. And one thing I prayed, I have a cloudy mind. I have kids four and under. I'm like, God, break, break strongholds off my mind. Cause I want to know the way you think too. Y'all, when you pray it twice, like your brain hurts. <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot, but man, to know the heart of God and the thoughts of God, it reframes a lot around us. So it's beautiful. Um, I think what's really beautiful looking at all three of your, your lives and just a testimony of the way you're living out this adversity right now is it's a picture um, for anyone and everyone watching of what the power of the gospel um, wants to do, can do in and through all of us. And um, for those tuned in, you may know that FCA presents the gospel in something they call the four. Um, you're going to see it here on your screen in a moment, but uh, the four basic that reveal to us the gospel. The first being that God loves you. He deeply loves you. He knits you together in your mother's womb. He formed you. He knew the days of your life uh, before you were even here. You're not just here, you're his. He made man, he made woman in his image to reflect his likeness to the world. Um, and he loves, he's a, he's a maker of great things. Um, and, and a giver of good gifts. And he gave you life. If you're tuned in watching this, and there's a creator who formed you, gave you the very breath in your lungs, the time you have right now, and who deeply loves you, who wants to use you for plans and for purpose, who wants you to walk in boldness, and courage, and authority. But the truth, too, the second part of the four, is that sin separates you from God. It separates all of us from God. Sin um, is, is our rejection, really, of the one who loves us, who knows us, who uh, made us and who calls us to what is truly best for us, the giver of life. When we choose to choose for ourselves what's best for us, what we want, what we think is most important, what idols we really put before God, man, we're separated from his love. And scripture says the wages of sin are death. That really in that separation, um, there's not much at the end of the line for all of us other than death. And that's hard and it's real. But the truth too of the gospel, the third part is that Jesus rescues us. God loves you so much. He loved his creation so much that even in light of our sin, of our brokenness, of our rejection of him, he said, I don't want death for them. I don't want death for them now. And I certainly don't want death for my people eternally. And so he sent his son, Jesus, to live a perfect, sinless life, to fulfill the law, as Helen was talking about, to live perfectly and to shed his blood as the sacrifice for our sins to be the lamb of God given so that in his name, by his grace, through our faith to believe in him, that sin can be broken off of our life, that we can come from death to spiritual life in Christ, that when sin creeps up and seems hard and overwhelming, we can cry out the name of Jesus and the power of that sin can be broken. You were not made to simply cope with what you are moving through. Jesus came to set the captives free, that you would live freely and know freedom and deed by the power of his blood. So God loves you. Sin separates you from that, but Jesus rescues you and calls you back 
his heart by the power of his love. So really the fourth left for us because we uh, can understand too looking to the gospel, not only does Jesus save us, but he then also offers us the gift of his Holy Spirit to live within us, that we can walk with him, know him, learn him, be in step with him, hear from him, really be in intimate love with him by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, this is an incredible gift. And it's one you don't want to miss. It's one you don't want to reject. If you're fearful, man, he breaks off fear. If you're confused, he gives clarity. If you're overwhelmed with adversity, he brings peace. And this is all by the gift of his spirit inside of you. So if that seems appealing to you, if that seems worth saying, then have my life, God. The fourth part of the four is will you trust him? Will you put your faith in him? Will you lay down your life, pick up your cross and carry it so as to know him and to walk in true freedom and power? It's the gospel presentation. And we want to extend that invitation to you all. We have people who would love to talk with you, to dive into more depth with you, um, to answer questions for you. And if you would like to learn more about what it means to follow Jesus, if you would like the peace that Karis and Damien and Helen have shared, the joy, the insight, the understanding that um, they've come to know in this season, you can text the word huddle up, just one word, huddle up, to 46322. Um, text about your decision and you'll get some more follow-up videos from other pro athletes to help you start growing in your faith. Again, that's huddle up, uh, text to 46322. We also have some great resources for you guys from Sports Spectrum and from FCA um, to help you grow in your faith. The links are listed below on this YouTube channel. Um, and if you want to subscribe to the FCA YouTube channel below, you can just hit that subscribe button. We all know how the YouTubes works. So we will have another FCA huddle up next week. Um, but I just want to thank you guys. Thank you, Karis. Thank you, Damien, and your son, and your wife, and your cat, who also I think at some point made an appearance. Uh, thank you, Helen, just for coming on and, and just sharing a little bit of y'all's heart and the journey that you're on right now. I would actually love um, if you guys could pray us out. I'm going to send it your way, Karis. If you could pray over the athletes, the parents, the coaches, all those who are tuned in watching this in this season, that would be great. Right. Hey, Lord, I just thank you so much for the ability to meet uh, together with other believers. Um, I just pray for our nation that you would just heal it. Um, I pray for the leadership um, that you would give them wisdom to make decisions. I uh, pray for the first responders, for those who are on the front lines, um, taking care of the sick. Lord, I pray for people who don't have what they need that you would just provide for us or provide for them. Um, God, I just pray that your, your, your name will be glorified in this time, um, that you would just help us to have peace and to have hope and not to worry about what's to come. Um, Lord, we just thank you that you, you saved us from our sins and you love us and you've given us the gift of salvation. Um, Lord, thank you for this time together, and I pray that we'll all just go forth and um, spread the gospel and just continue to love people and show how great you are. It's in name, your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Damien, as the father in the group, can you just toss these student-athletes um, a word of just fatherly encouragement, uh, just to send them out with, with all their kind of navigating? Can you give them some encouragement before we wrap? No, I was... Uh... I would just say uh, play your sport in the freedom that the Lord's given us. Mm -hmm. like, uh, there's, this, there's this freedom that you can, you know, that we, we've obviously can tap into in our personal lives, but there's a freedom that you can tap into in your sport life that allows you to, to tap into the, the true ability the Lord has given you in your individual sport. And I think that's when you see athletes do amazing, amazing things. So get close to him and tap into that. Yeah, so good. Purpose behind our passions. It's awesome, you guys. We thank you for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you again on FCA Huddle Up next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.